on May 17, 2000, Canon announced the D30, their first homegrown digital SLR camera. But 13 years ago, in November 2008, the same company released a successor for Canon 5D. The successor is known as Canon 5D Mark II and was made to make everything like never before. The same body in size with its predecessor a bit less heavy, two more buttons and a larger CCD screen with a much better resolution. A bigger sensor and a better battery, this is mostly what brings 5D Mark II comparing with the first 5D model released in 2005. But uh, what put the 5D Mark II in the middle of attention back to date is its feature of recording videos. The first DSLR title for recording videos belongs to Nikon D90, being the first DSLR which recorded videos at 720p with 24 frames per second. Just a few months later, Canon released 5D Mark II and could record videos at 1080p with 30 frames per second. So Canon 5D Mark II was the first DSLR camera which could record videos full HD. And this was huge. With this camera, Canon bring the opportunity to make high quality content to the mass. Not very cheap, being over $2,500 at the time, it was still affordable comparing with video cameras with interchangeable lens. And it was not all about resolution, it was the full HD resolution on a full frame camera in the same package. The Canon 5D Mark II was welcomed by everyone and the next year BBC used this camera on Grand Prix snooker. In 2010 the episode Help Me from House TV series was shot entirely on Canon 5D Mark II and I think that one in particular is the best video sample of what these camera capabilities are. Due to its depth of field and its small size comparing with 35mm film cameras, the Canon 5D Mark II offered something new and reliable and everyone tried to take advantage. And it wasn't just about the big companies who took advantage of this camera, but also enthusiasts who instantly could combine the full HD feature with the full frame sensor in a very small package comparing with heavy and complicated video cameras at the time. YouTube was founded in 2005 and just three years later people could do such great videos with such a small camera. Canon 5D Mark II is the same size with its predecessor and its successors and has a quite big body. If you add the battery grip it will be extremely similar with Canon 1DX, the difference being just few millimeters. Its design is the classic Canon design and believe it or not, the control wheel was there since their first digital SLR camera, Canon D30, and their size and layout is almost identical. The body is made from metal and is actually a tank, being extremely solid and it's supposed to be weather sealed. The button's layout is common in all Canon cameras and this one makes no exception and I have to say it's extremely ergonomic. The joystick helps you to set the focus point and also helps to move while you zoom the photo. This joystick became common in lots of other brands and even though I wouldn't really need it, it's a feature nice to have. Most of the needed settings are already in a presetted button and they are all well put in place. You have three custom profiles and all other required modes present on almost any professional camera. I use the pointer wheel for shutter speed and the thumb wheel for f-stops and this way is very easy to set it up for the perfect picture. Obviously it doesn't have a flash because at this kind of camera photographers always use an external flash when more light is needed. It has only one card slot and use only compact flash cards. Such cards are a bit more expensive than SD cards, but they are supposed to be faster. Canon 5D Mark II has many inputs on the left side. This one is for flash, this is for using a remote control, for using an external microphone, for audio video out, for syncing with your PC and for using an external monitor. To sync it with your PC or Mac you need the mini USB and not a micro USB. The lens mount is EF and EFS lenses will not work on this camera. You can use all Nikon F and G lenses on this Canon by using the proper adapter, however you won't be able to use the Sony E mount. 
micro four thirds also cannot be used on this camera. Not even all Canon lenses are working, for example EFS will not work because they retract too much and they will interfere with the mirror. But thankfully Canon has plenty of lenses to choose from and they are not that expensive compared with other full frame cameras. The Canon 5D Mark II is a full frame camera having a sensor of 36 by 24 millimeters, larger than APS-C or APS-H and much larger than Micro Four Thirds. It features 21 effective megapixels and its full frame capabilities are huge. The biggest advantage is in low light being able to capture much more light than smaller sensors. 21 megapixels was enormous at the time and it's still something given today. 1DX Mark III launched in 2020 has 1 megapixel less than 5D Mark II released 12 years before and 1DX Mark III is Canon's flagship at this moment. So the 5D Mark II sensor should be considered up to date. And accepting the low light advantages there's the shallow depth of field gave by a full frame sensor. This photo was shot with the 5D Mark II and a Micro Four Thirds camera in the same environment and by using the same settings. As you can see the background is more blurred on the full frame camera and as long as you'd want a cinematic look a full frame camera has an advantage. Canon 5D Mark II has an LCD screen, 3 inches in size, having a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels. It has no tilting and no touchscreen. Obviously at the time this was not a standard and even their more updated flagship 1DX Mark III doesn't have tilting feature. However, I have to say the LCD screen is quite limited and let's say for previewing a photo would be enough but for recording videos you definitely need an external monitor. Otherwise you'd have to guess if you're in focus, if you're using manual focus. The top panel reports all of the camera's main exposure, f-stops and menu settings. This display is black and white and this is for saving the battery. Here are shown only the main settings and nothing else. It also has the option to light it up so you can see your settings in low light. Initially you might say you won't need this panel but once you have it you'll find it useful. The menu is Canon's classic menu and Canon fans loves it. I have to admit it's very intuitive and easy even for beginners. Regarding in body stabilization it has no stabilization at all. So if you mind to use this camera for vlogging it's definitely not the best choice. Even though you can attach an external microphone, which is a great feature in vlogging, having no tilting screen and no in-body stabilization is quite useless. For photos I wouldn't say this is a problem, but for recording videos a gimbal would be extremely useful, otherwise the video will be quite shaky. Its autofocus speed is decent, however while recording videos it doesn't have autofocus and the only option to focus while shooting is by pressing the AF on button. By using this option it has a contrast detect autofocus and this can be seen in your video while recording. So this may be helpful especially if you need a confirmation if you are in focus, but you'd have to cut this in post processing otherwise the video might look ridiculous. Since filming it doesn't support autofocus, dealing with manual focus on a such smaller screen in size and resolution, it's extremely difficult. It doesn't support picking and on this small screen using manual focus, you're never sure you're 100% in focus. Via HDMI you can add an external monitor, however this supposes more money to invest and carry with you more accessories and making your gear even bigger and heavier. Filming with 5D Mark II is quite primitive, but since this was the first DSLR recording at 1080p, that's magnificent for the time when it was released. You have to press this button to activate live preview and you can start recording by pressing the button in the middle of the thumb wheel. The recording is limited to 30 frames per second. 
His battery is compatible with lots of Canon cameras up to 5D Mark IV, 6D, 7D, 60D, 70D and 80D. Fully charged you can take up to 850 shots. When charging the charger gives you indications about how charged is your battery. You can add a grip where you'll be able to add two batteries and obviously you'll be able to make more shots without changing your battery. However, being already so big, I'd rather change the battery during the photo shoot instead of carrying an even larger camera. The overall experience is great, a very ergonomic and capable camera and I would say the results are very up to date especially if we consider photographs. In terms of videos, 4K becomes a standard day by day and being stuck at 1080p at only 30 frames per second, obviously we're limited. However, the results are good. If we consider this camera as it was back in 2008 when it was released, it's definitely a top camera and you can't compare it with many others. Today there are plenty more options from Canon and not only and in my opinion the biggest downside is its size and weight. Comparing it with other full frame cameras, not with Micro Four Thirds or APS-C cameras, Lumix S5 has over 100 grams less, Canon R5 has also over 100 grams less, and Sony A7 III has 200 grams less in weight, and all of them are smaller in size. So in my opinion, this is the biggest downside today. Of course, it feels premium being heavy, but it's not practical. I think if I'd use this in a strictly controlled environment, would still be a top camera and I barely need an upgrade. If I consider it an all-in-one camera for many purposes, then I'd rather go for a different model, from Canon or from other brand. Despite the fact it was extremely revolutionary at its time, today it's impossible to not compare it with other cameras. As we compared it with other cameras when it was released. If we wouldn't compare it with other cameras, then it wouldn't be revolutionary. So, if we compare it with other cameras being so big and heavy, it offers a difficult experience. The results are great and if I want to aim for the best possible result, let's say just a photo shoot without filming, then I wouldn't matter dealing with it and I would go for this camera. If I consider the ratio between the effort of taking photos with and the results I get, then probably almost any time I'd go for a different camera, not necessarily a different brand, but definitely a more compact camera with more up-to-date features. And one more thing to consider, this camera is not just bigger and heavier than most of other cameras, but attracts bigger and heavier accessories than other cameras. It's not just heavier by itself, but the lens would most probably be heavier, adding an external monitor makes it bigger and heavier, requires a more solid tripod which obviously would be heavier and so on. Do I recommend this camera? Well, if you get it at a reasonable price and you're ready to give up comfort for a great result, the results will be great, but if comfort is important then this camera doesn't offer this. However, with pros and cons, this is the Canon 5D Mark II and was made to be remembered.